So welcome back to our last talk for today. Um, I would love to introduce you to um, the three of them. David Parks, the founder of Concept3. Stephen Lerman, executive vice president, consumer of Brookwood Companies. And Sharon Perez, business development manager by Lansing. All of them will join the discussion and they will give us a short introduction to the performance and versatility of tensile textiles in outdoor apparel. Hello. Hello, David. Hello, Hello. Stephen. Hello, Sharon. Hello. Hello. So um, I open the discussion to you. And feel Very free good. to ask questions. I will forward them after um, the talk. Very good, Astrid. Many thanks for the introduction. Good morning, everyone from New York City, and good afternoon uh, to our European friends and business associates. Uh, the three of us are certainly excited to be making this presentation and equally pleased that we are involved with the Performance Day show. Uh, Performance Days has been such an important um, uh, such an important show for performance apparel, performance textiles during the last 10, 11 years and had such an impact on our industry that we're delighted that the virtual show uh, is so successful and the attendance obviously has been extremely good in the last two days. So that is, is really very pleasing. We also thank you for registering and being part of uh, our presentation today and we certainly hope you enjoy uh, the information that we're going to bring to you. Uh, allow me to introduce myself, uh, David Parks. I am the founder of Concept3 Textiles. We were established uh, almost 40 years ago in the US um, and, we, and then we opened an office in the UK 25 years ago. And our focus is on the marketing and product development of performance textiles for performance apparel, whether it be the outdoor industry, e-wear industry, golf, workwear, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, our whole focus is developing better textiles from new yarns, new knitting and weaving uh, technology uh, for those industries. And um, as I said, we're located in the UK, we're located in the US, and we work, we believe, with all the major brands uh, in outdoor performance apparel and workwear. Let me introduce myself. I'll hand it over to Stephen uh, with Brookwood to introduce and his company, and then Aaron will do likewise. Stephen Lerman, I'm the Executive Vice President of Brookwood Consumer Division. Brookwood's a company uh, that's a premier integrated source for performance woven textiles worldwide to consumer, outdoor, industrial, military, and medical markets. We supply textiles in over 50 countries. The company currently today has 470 employees. Our company structure is divided into marketing and manufacturing areas. On the marketing side, we have consumer, industrial, military, medical, and world goods. Uh, today, I'll just touch on a couple of those. The consumer area is the area I head up, and the fabrics we're talking about today fall under that category. Uh, we have office partners in uh, Korea and Taiwan to support our industrial uh, and uh, development and sales and production. Some of our current Customers are people like Patagonia, VF, Canada Goose, and Carhartt, to name a few. The other big growth area in our market is our wool goods division, which is our in-stock programs. We stock over 70 fabrics on the floor. Some have 65 colors, uh, both on the east and west coast in the United States. And those fabrics can be bought by the wool and usually are shipped same day, next day. On the manufacturing side, we own two plants in America. Brookwood finishing, Brookwood laminating. Uh, we have a vast array of manufacturing capabilities, which include printing, dyeing, finishing, coating, and technical lamination. Uh, the last thing I'll leave is Brookwood, the company committed to help our planet. Uh, in 2005, we started our Emerald Initiative. Uh, we spent have spent OES, oh, over $8 million since then to support it. Part of our mission statement states, uh, we are going to help the people around us and the planet we live on. We see Tencel as a great fiber to help us in that initiative. And with that, I will turn it over to Sharon. 
Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Performance Days, and thank you to um, my colleagues on this presentation, and thank you to all of you who are um, logging into our presentation today. I wanted to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, where you may be. Um, I'm not sure if there's a chat functionality on this, but I'd love to see you know, where different people are calling in from or logging in from. If you can type in your city or your country in the chat feature, or that would be really great to see. Thank you. So a little bit about myself. So I am Sharon Perez and I'm business development manager um, in the US for lensing. I'm focused on the activewear and footwear sections. And again, that's for our brands here in the US. For those of you who are not familiar with lensing, we, um, lensing is based in the town called Lensing, Austria, and they're producing wood-based fibers since 1938. And our high quality fibers range from everything from intimates and children's wear all the way to denim and even um, FR applications. And we also have a non-woven segment. So our fibers are both known for their softness, but also for their strength. And then lastly, we're very well known for sustainability. So we are a sustainability, sustainability leader. We are the first wood-based fiber producer to have approved science-based targets. And as a leader, we don't just you know, sell fiber directly, but in the supply chain, we partner with yarn spinners and fabric producers. That, as an example, we have our tree climate collection here where we've partnered with Brookwood and Concept3. And we're excited to share more about that with you all. Thank you. And so with that, I'm going to be going through um, a little bit about our role within this collection and to help provide information about our Tencel fibers. So all I mentioned we are a wood-based fiber producer, and this means that all our fiber comes from wood. So in this chart here, you can see we're going from forest to fiber. We take the wood, make it into wood chips, it gets processed into pulp, and there we have the fiber. And as I mentioned, we our fiber can go into textile applications, but also in non-wovens. And we're also in new business areas, such as footwear and packaging. Now here's just a brief image of how our tensile lyocell fiber is made. So again, we're taking the wood and making it into pulp and we're mixing water and a solvent. And we are using the water and the solvent to cha uh, physically change the structure of the pulp into fiber. And one of the benefits of this process, which we call closed loop production, is that it is a sustainable process because we are reusing the water and the solvent, we're capturing it at an, a rate of over 99% and reusing it. We don't say 100% because part of, part of it, the water is lost through evaporation. What this closed loop production process allows us to do is one, we're using, like I mentioned, less water and therefore we are using less energy. And so the, the pulp that we are using gives us, you know, a lower ecological impact in during the manufacturing process of when we're making the fiber and a high resource efficiency. If you are not familiar with Tencel, we often get asked about, you know, our raw material source, which is wood, which is trees. And we have two certifications for all of our uh, raw material sourcing. And it's these two certifications from FSC, which is the Forest Stewardship Council, and then with PEFC, which is the program for the endorsement of forest certification schemes. And again, this applies to all of the wood or all of the pulp that we are sourcing. Now, we often, you know, we, we're, as an industry, we're thinking a lot about, you know, what is happening to products that we are done using, right? We're often been running on a linear model and, 
lately, the past couple of years, this circular model um, and circular design and circular economy has been uh, a priority and not only a discussion. And so we're very proud to be to say that and to share with you all that when you ask yourselves what happens to garments that are used with our fiber at, at its end life. And one of the benefits of our fiber is that it's biodegradable. So it's coming from nature, we say, and returns to nature. So again, we're using trees and we're using wood and using pulp and making it into a fiber. And so all of our fibers um, branded under the Tencel, like in this collection, we used our Tencel Lyocell. It is biodegradable and it's also compostable. And these are the certifications that we have for biodegradability and compostability in soil, in marine life, in fresh water, and then in both home settings and industrial settings. And with that, I'd like to then, you know, I've shared a little bit about what our fibers are. And now I'd like to share with you a little bit about what the fiber properties are. So what I'm showing you here is uh, microscopic images of what our fiber looks like, what polyester looks like, and cotton. So as you can see in this image, the blue represents water. And this shows that our fiber has absorbed the most water when compared to cotton and polyester. Now, you can also notice the surface, right? Our, the, our lyocell fiber is not, it's not as irregular like cotton, but it's not as perfectly circular like polyester. It's in the middle. It's combining both type of, of structures. Now, on the right-hand side, that is a close-up of the surface of the uh, lyocell fiber. And you can see that there are a lot of what we call nanofibrils. What this does is water is transferred transported through these channels. So when the fiber absorbs water, they, the water or the moisture moves through these channels and then it goes towards the surface. As a result, what this allows us to do is to be able to um, have other benefits to our fiber, such as what you see here is enhanced breathability, moisture management, and we say unfavorable for bacterial growth. We do not say it is antibacterial because this natural performance does not use anything that kills bacteria, which would imply the antibacterial. So with enhanced breathability and with this moisture management, with the way that the fiber is able to absorb moisture and disperse it, through, throughout the structure and into the surface is a very important component of feeling comfortable and to help regulate body temperature. And then here is another cross-section comparison of the surface of the fiber. So on the left-hand side, we have our fiber compared to wood, uh, wool and cotton, sorry. So as you can see, it is very, very smooth. Wool has amazing properties. And we also know it, you know, from that hand feel, it can be, you know, a little bit scratchy. And then cotton, which also has that great, very natural hand feel. Lyocell fiber is very, very smooth. And this is why oftentimes when it's blended in a fabric, those of you who are familiar with fabrics, with our fiber can usually detect it by the hand feel because it has a very, very, signature hand feel. It's very, very smooth. It helps um, with a lot of other blends to help provide that softness. And then lastly, one of the benefits of tensile fiber is its strength. So oftentimes we think that because it is soft, that something cannot be strong. You know, it's not mutually exclusive. So here, what I'm showing here is that the tenacity of our fibers. So we have, we, we make viscose modal tensile, um, and lyocell and modal, as I mentioned. So here, what I'm, this graph shows is that even when the fiber is wet, it does not lose the strength. It has a high tenacity. 
And then that's it for my portion of properties of our Tencel fibers. And I'll hand it over to David. Thank you, Sean. Uh, that certainly uh, was a very succinct and uh, I believe uh, simple, simple uh, presentation of understanding all the great properties uh, of, uh, of lensing, lensing fibers, particularly Tencel. Uh, it makes sense that we should call this collection the tree climate collection uh, because we're using fiber that originates uh, from trees and is, is turned into pulp. Um, so what was the, what was the motivation uh, behind our looking at Tencel and, uh, and uh, driving a collection of fabrics that are very much focused on the outdoor industry and performance apparel. The nature of the outdoor industry demands it. And what I mean by that is performance apparel is all about textile innovation and intelligent uh, credible marketing. Uh, that's what the brands have accomplished over the last 40 to 50 years. And as I said, the foundation uh, of performance apparel is the innovation in yarn and textile engineering that enables us to offer new product. Uh, I believe that the outdoor industry as we know it today was established 45 to 50 years ago with the introduction of products like Gore-Tex, Thinsulate, and then ultimately Polytech, which was probably the biggest driver uh, of creating uh, what we know today uh, as, as performance of power. So we have an industry that demands this type of innovation. Tencel brings so many uh, good features uh, that Sharon has already, already covered. As you mentioned, sustainability, which is a huge subject today. Uh, we are demanded in, uh, in all the textiles that we are developing, we're demanded to focus on the sustainability of that textile in a garment. Tencel obviously checks that box. Uh, it's, a, it's aesthetic, uh, the hand, the drape of Tencel lends itself very much to uh, performance apparel layers. Um, and obviously it offers a broad comfort range, uh, which uh, Sharon did touch on. I want to talk a little bit more about thermal performance absorption. And if you'll excuse me, I'm going to read uh, a couple of paragraphs, which I believe explain this a very, very important element uh, of Tencel to us. The fiber will absorb moisture and vapor as wool and other natural fibers. Microscopy unveils a coral-like structure of fibrils, which Sharon mentioned, in tensile, similar to the nature of wool. The sorption of thermal heat is created by moisture absorption and thermal heat created by body energy. The body is creating a thermal climate within the fiber known as heat sorption. The fiber and textile then move and transmit wick vapor created by the, th by the body's thermal activity. So the industry is looking for new product, the industry is looking for new ideas, the industry is looking for sustainable solutions, and in addition, the industry is looking for technology, and this collection is bringing that to the table. So now I'd like to move into uh, a presentation of the textiles that we have developed to date uh, I will refer to the nets, and then Stephen and, uh, and, and Sharon will refer to, to other products. Um, we're in the process of developing a net collection, uh, which we know is, is focused and ideal uh, for performance apparel. And the first item uh, is a textured net where you will see we have a fleece uh, finish on the inside and a really interesting uh, knit construction on the face uh, of the fabric. Um, fleece products are obviously critically important to our industry. Um, we understand uh, the the you know the fiber issue with ocean fibers, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and we're all doing uh, a lot of product development in that area to minimize uh, the shedding of fiber. Uh, but fleece, as a as a category, is very important. This fabric, which is a blend of lyocell, tencel, and polyester blended with Ciclo, which uh, is a, a, an additive to polyester and recycled polyester that will degrade the polyester, will degrade the textile construction in the landfill, 
uh, is a 100% sustainable product using recycled polyester with Cyclo and Tencel. Uh, and it has not only a great drape and a great look, uh, but the texture of the face uh, is, is, is really exciting. Uh, knowing that today sweater stitch looks, sweaters in general, uh, are a strong trend. We believe that this fabric will move that trend forward. The second fabric we developed is a three-end or reverse, a reverse weave uh, fleece. Um, industry calls it a reverse weave, even though it's a reverse knit. Uh, but the construction has been around uh, since I believe Champion introduced the product in the 1980s. This three-end fleece uh, is a blend again of tensile with polyester and the signal additive. Um, uh, three end gives the fabric more stretch, better drape. Uh, this is a really fine, heavier weight uh, uh, sweat, sweat, fleece fabric. Um, uh, but the tensile imparts uh, the thermal properties I referred to, and obviously the hand and drape. And then the third item that we've developed uh, is a, a product that we call the flat back rib. Um, this is not a new textile, it's not a new construction. Uh, it is not particularly important in the market today. It was 15, 20 years ago, uh, and we believe it's time for it to return. This is a heavier knit with a very interesting face texture, and it has great body. It's a great outer layer, it's a great mid layer. Um, the tensile obviously Gives us, gives us hand and performance. And again, we have the polyester Cyclo uh, for, uh, this is to add to the sustainability story. The really interesting thing about this product is that it drapes like, uh, almost like a jacket. Um, and uh, it's, it's a, it's a uh, construction that we believe is going to become more important. And then to coordinate with these three fabrics, uh, we have a rib, um, which, tends to speak for itself. Now, beyond these fabrics, there are other knits being developed. Uh, we are working on a Sherpa, a textured Berber face. That look is important today. And uh, again, we want to bring the tensile story to that construction. We're also working with some higher pile uh, trim tensile fabrics. Tensile has this wonderful hand, so when it's converted into high pile fabrics, we can take advantage of that softness. Um, that completes the, uh, the knit presentation. Um, I believe uh, I now need to ask Stephen to talk about the wovens that we have developed together. So we started, uh, you know, looking at what would be great styles for the tree climate co connection uh, and uh, with the tensile fibers. So the first, uh, as we did our development of our collection, which kind of got stopped as a result of COVID, um, we started out looking at our classic 6040 cloth, uh, which was the original outdoor fabric used in jackets and Arctic parkas, um, you know, and we reimagined it using tensile. Um, so basically what we did here is we used 60% tensile and 40% nylon to basically give you uh, a tensile version of the classic 60-40 cloth. Um, this, this design should be ideal for a phase fabric for a jacket, and we also think it will go excellent with the Concept 3 knits in any type of an outerwear garment. Uh, to continue with our developments, uh, as a tensile outdoor concept. We next added a bottom weight canvas, which is our style Andes. Uh, Andes has a beautiful hand feel, almost feels sanded because of the nature of the tensile. Um, and also it has all the function benefits of the tensile. We then also added a little bit of Cordura for some additional strength and then stretch for comfort, making the style an ideal performance canvas fabric. Um, for future uh, wovens, uh, we have several in, in work. Uh, we're looking to uh, add additional stretch wovens. Some of those will be tensile cotton spandex blends or tensile nylon spandex blends in active wear and uh, outdoor wear weights somewhere between, uh, you know, I'd say one 
45 and 250 grams per meter square. We also then uh, are working on a twill, which is going to be a 65, 35, 10 cell nylon blend geared towards uh, workwear bottoms and outdoor bottoms. Um, and then we're in the early stages of uh, developing some 10 cell cotton shirting weights. Um, those could potentially be both solid and yarn dyes. Um, you know, and we're hoping to have, see a lot of those by the end of Q1. You know, Brookwood's strength for over 30 years is that we like to do product development. So while these are some ideas of what we're doing, um, certainly we love to develop product with end customers' needs in mind. So please feel free to contact us with any suggestions or things you might be needing or looking for, uh, for, for your particular end uses. Okay, Sharon. Okay, and moving on from Wogan's, I'm really excited about this construction. Um, we named it the Alps flannel, and the one that you're seeing here is our plaid flannel. Um, when David and I were talking, he felt strongly that uh, something with a you know flannel surface finish would was really important to this collection and so we decided to use you know brighten up the normal uh, flannel pattern by adding vibrant colors and um, this construction has you know it's almost a 50 50 tensile lysol with cotton traditionally we've seen these flannels in 100% cotton or even in a cotton polyester blend. And what we did here, like I said, we did fit like a 47%, 53% cotton. And, and that can be obviously uh, modified. And we worked with a really great partner out in Taiwan to, to um, create this fabric. So it is available if anybody's interested. And what this flannel does is aside from it being, you know, um, a mono component where it's, um, using just natural fiber so you have that um, benefit but also given the fiber benefits of our lyosol fiber this our fiber helps to contribute that when you're wearing this flannel you're going to feel warmer than if you were wearing a, a 100 percent cotton or a cotton poly blend and on top of that it is very, very buttery soft. It feels great. I wish that we were doing this presentation in person and we could pass these garments and swatches around so you could feel it. Um, it feels amazing. And we did create this in a heavier weight um, to also add that warmth. You know, again, this collection was designed with the outdoor industry in mind. However, we know that today consumers wear their pieces for everything, you know, um, to commute, to go hiking, to relax at home. And I believe this flannel is comfortable for, for all of those, for all of those um, functions. And then taking that one step further, we developed what we call the cascade solid stretch flannel. So this we did not do in a in a plaid, however, it can be done in a plaid. And we took uh, the similar construction of tensile cotton and added a little bit of stretch. Um, we thought it would be comfortable, you know, if you wanted to do it as a um, bottom. So we did this construction even heavier at 300 grams. But also we wanted to do a version, you know, sometimes some people want stretch on the upper portion for a top. So it can also be done in a lighter weight and still keeping that stretch for comfort. And those are, I think that finishes out the wovens portion of this collection. Okay, and possibly as we only have two or three minutes left, uh, maybe Astra, do we need to go to questions? I think that would make, make sense. I mean, uh, we, have a, we have a closing remark, market trends in product development 
uh, my comment there would be uh, there is a great deal of product development uh, going on right now aimed at 22, 23. Uh, we have done some product development for autumn, winter 21, but due to COVID and inventory levels and restrictions on what uh, and what mills can do, uh, I don't think we're going to see a lot of new products in 21, but we certainly, 22, 23, I think will be a game changer season in terms of new products. Product will not be tweaks of what we have in the industry today. There will be some radically new, really interesting products hitting uh, hitting brands uh, for autumn, winter, uh, 22 into 23. And that leads us to questions. If there are any questions, Astrid. There are questions. Thank you, guys. Um... Bettina is asking, um, is it also possible to modify the fiber cross-section by different spinning nozzles as with synthetic fibers? I think, Sharon, that's a question for lensing. I didn't quite catch that. Can you repeat the question, please? Of course, of course. Is it also possible to modify the fiber cross-section by different spinning nozzles as with synthetic fibers? Oh, okay. So I think the question is about the shape uh, when we're making our fiber. Yeah. Um, all our fiber, yeah. So um, no, we do not alter the shape. I know that we have been in conversations in our non-wovens segment to alter the shape because for non-wovens, um, when you're making wipes, you need really high, high absorbency. And we did have some development about altering that shape to create more surface to absorb more moisture, but that was for a very specific application. So we don't do that for our fibers on the textile side, but given the fact that there's uh, research done for our non-wovens, the answer would be yes, we can do it, but we, we, don't, we don't do that at the moment for our textiles. Thank you. Um, there is a question on Tencel 100 you were referring to. How about Tencel standard in the same fleece application? So it's for David, I think. Tencel in fleece. Yes. Um, yeah, there, are, there, there is product that has been developed, particularly blended with wool. Um, there are Tencel uh, fleeces and Tencel nets available in the market today. Um, from different mills um, and from the mills that, that we work with. So that product is available and I'm certainly very happy to share that information with whoever uh, posted that question. Uh, we have focused on trying to drive uh, a different direction to for the knits and also incorporating recycled polyester with CPO in order to accomplish a 100% sustainable program. But Tencel is, are definitely available. If that question would like to send me an email, I will respond within 24 hours. Thank you. Astrid, I would also like to add, and I did forget to mention this earlier, my colleague, Victor Almeida, who is also our technical expert for the Americas, joined this call. Yeah, I would, I, I would love I did to give you the, the, the uh, countries where, where the people are chatting with oh. you. So we have people from, from Taiwan, from UK, from Berlin, from Hong Kong, Estonia, Sweden, of course the US, of course Munich. So I think there are a lot of um, people joining us and having questions oh, great. and... Great. Yeah and sharing Thank sharing you. us so um yes so let me let me uh, quote another one um, it goes to you sharon <laughs> so it's okay about... i just wanted to say one thing yes that um my colleague victor almeida i yeah. asked him to join also on chat and if people you know while i was speaking if people had questions and they couldn't stay on till the end I did ask him, he's also our technical expert, so he can also address questions there in case we run out of time or if we don't get to your question, please put it in the chat box and he'll be able to also help. But please go ahead. He, he already answered some questions um, in the chat. That's great. So he... <laughs> Thank you, Victor. There, 
<laughs> so uh, let me see to you Sharon there is um, a question about any improvement on the fibrillation issue most outdoor knit development I've done so far still have obvious fibrillation issue I'd also like to know more on the wet crocking strength yes that is um, a good question so when lensing, you know, for our lyocell fiber, we do have different types. We have our, uh, we started out with our standard tensile lyocell standard fiber, which is great for uh, woven applications, denim, um, in sheeting. And then after that, we introduced our A100 type fiber. Now, with regards to the fibrillation, we did introduce our uh, Lyocell LF, which stands for low fibrillating. And this is something that is very important when doing developments with our fiber. One, you have to consider that you are using the correct Lyocell fiber for uh, the development, and you have to consider what you are blending the lyocell fiber with? Are you blending it with a synthetic or are you blending it with a natural fiber? Because this is a something that will need to be considered for the dyeing and finishing portion. Then in addition, you have to take into consideration uh, the yarn spinning technique. And then lastly, of course, the construction. So this is something that uh, we are very um, used to addressing. We have a team of technical experts that are located globally to help exactly with these types of questions. So I would ask the person who um, sent in that question to please send me an email. Um, here is our contact information. Um, you can send me an email. We need more of the details to look into how we can support you. And then, um, you know, Victor's here in the U.S., but we also have his counterparts in in Asia and Europe to also work with the action with wherever the supplier can be based. Great. Um, so uh, there's a quote on on blending. Uh, so many of the fabrics you show are blended with synthetics. How does that fit with the ideas around end of life textile recycling? I think it would quote to that um, question before. I can I can pick up on that question, David. Um, uh, recycled polyester obviously uh, is a positive uh, in, in this direction. Uh, we would love to use 100% tensile, but that just is not feasible from a, from a cost uh, and abrasion standpoint. Uh, so we've looked at um, recycled polyester. Obviously, there are products available uh, with wool uh, too. Uh, recycled polyester treated with Ciclo uh, does accomplish the sustainability uh, challenges uh, that we are all facing. Um, CECO is an, addit an additive that is made to polyester and recycled polyester that will uh, assist in the degradation uh, of the finished style in, uh, in the landfill. Um, it is still in development in terms of being considered a biodegradable product, which it cannot claim to be, but it is working towards uh, being a product which will allow um, uh, hopefully total degradation in, in a landfill. And we're very, very sensitive, believe me, we're very sensitive to circularity and developing products that will, that will accomplish that. Um, that's basically uh, all I can add at this point. We're not perfect, but we're trying to get there. Okay, thank you. So, um, Emily is asking, can you, um, no, Johanna, what options do you have for performance leggings materials? Sorry, can you repeat that question, Ashley? Um, options for performance leggings uh, materials, fibers for performance leggings. Oh, for performance leggings. Mm -hmm. um, any comments on that, Stephen? <laughs> oh, I, I would say some of the stretch wovens that we're developing uh, could potentially be good for that. Um, obviously, uh, you know, if you want to keep the, the eco story, doing them with some kind of tensile cotton blend would probably be better, or we could potentially do them with tensile and recycled polyester if you want to have a more technical uh, feature to the leggings. 
but uh, both those would certainly be possible in uh, stretch woven options. And then stretch, I've also seen some options. I've also seen some options um, with some of our knit partners uh, with blends with our fiber and cotton and nylon and obviously high stretch. So um, if you know whoever sent that question wants to send me an email for more information, be more than happy to share some suppliers that we've been working with that um, do specialize in this area. Thank you, Sharon. So um, can materials with tensile lyocell be scored in the high in the HIC index? Good question. So yes, um, in the HIG index, you can compare our fibers with generic lyocell, with cotton, with polyester, and other types of blends. You can search for 10 cell lyocell and 10 cell modal, and you will get the, the data. Thank you. <laughs> and are you working with other sustainable fiber components or mill processes in this textile development that drives sustainability? I'm, I think my response to that would be we are always looking uh, at other options uh, that are out there. Um, we're also very sensitive to working with options uh, that do truly have credibility. Uh, there, are many, there are many products coming to the market. Uh, doing product development is obviously an expensive investment. And uh, so we're reviewing chemical additives, uh, which would meet a blue sign accreditation, for example. Uh, and we're looking uh, at, at other finishes and fibers and yarns. Uh, but there's no particular direction that I would uh, that I would add to that question, except we are very, very uh, sensitive to everything that's going on. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the shedding of fibers is a subject that the whole industry being as responsible as it is, is spending a lot of time, a lot of investment in addressing. Thanks. So uh, Tov is asking, you mentioned some of the downsides of using 100% tensile. Could you elabor elaborate why that is not an option? Uh, do you wish to address that question, Sharon? I'm certainly glad to, uh, to address it. Um, unless you particularly wish to. Oh, okay. I mean, I think you mentioned why you didn't use 100%, why we didn't use 100% in the collection. Um, I can share a little bit about it. So there is absolutely, you know, no reason why you can't use 100% uh, tensile ISL. We've seen this, you know, applied in different programs. What David had mentioned is one um, for abrasion. So obviously, you know, synthetic fibers and natural fibers, there's pros and cons to both. So where in areas and in, in applications where you need uh, high abrasion, then that's where synthetic fibers tend to excel. That is one reason why, depending on the end application, 100% uh, tensile lyocell would not score the same as a 100% polyester or, you know, but you can figure out blends to get to the results that you're looking for. And then um, another um, reason that David mentioned is based off of price. You know, we do make these specialty fibers with many wonderful uh, features and benefits, and therefore the price is higher than if you were using, uh, you know, uh, cotton or, 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 or plain viscose or even, you know, just 100% polyester. Thank you. I don't know if you want to add anything, David. Well, you know, I would just, I would just add one. Yeah, I would just add that also it depends on the end product being made. You know, 100% tensile feels almost like silk, right? So in some end applications, you want that beautiful silky hand. In some applications, you want a more rugged outdoorsy hand. So that'll determine how much tensile you want to put into a development as well. Thank you. So uh, one last question. Do you see growth and new applications for performance textiles in performance apparel? 
I'll, I'll pick up on that question because uh, I'm sure Stephen and Sharon will have comments, but uh, I'm excited to answer this question because it is, the answer is most definitely yes. Uh, obviously, um, with uh, the, the pandemic, uh, we're all seeing people spending far more time in the outdoors, whether it's hiking, kayaking, cycling, et cetera, et cetera. And that is leading uh, the consumer to outdoor brands, to outdoor apparel, understanding the benefits of, of wicking, thermal, uh, thermal characteristics of textiles, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so performance apparel, there is no question in my mind that that business uh, is, is going to grow um, and the consumer is going to relate to the outdoor brands even more strongly than they have in the past. And the, uh, the outdoor brands have a great track record, not only of making great product, uh, but uh, outstanding, realistic uh, marketing, um, which the consumer does respond to. So there is no question in my mind that a performance apparel will grow. And in fact, the brands today in a difficult market uh, all seem financially strong and are doing well. So a resounding yes to growth. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I would add to that, that yeah, absolutely, it's a growth area. Um, and that the end customers more and more want one product that does a variety uh, of performance, you know, and, you know, all great things start with one step. You know, our ultimate goal would be to have everything be sustainable and biodegradable, you know, but with that also comes performance challenges, you know, you know, everything has compromise in this market. Uh, you know, even if you look at just DWR as, as a concept, we started with C8, which was bad for the people, bad for the environment. We transitioned to C6, which was better for the people and the environment. And now we're working with PFC3. But part of that compromise of being better for the environment was that we gave up oil and stain resistance for water repellency only. So we just have to keep all those things in mind when you're developing uh, you, you know, uh, performance-oriented textiles that are also sustainable and, and potentially biodegradable. Thank you. So Sharon, you want to add something? <laughs> oh, I just want to say that, you know, thank you everybody for joining today. Yes. Me too, me too. You know, <laughs> we, <laughs> we've seen a lot of interest, you know, into sustainability. We encourage it. We welcome it. Uh, any questions, you know, we love yep. Yep. innovation. So uh, please, you know, reach out to all of my, you know, my colleagues here for any specific questions. So thank you so much. Um, stay safe and um, see you hopefully um, at the next performance days and the next Sustain and yes. Innovate. Bye. Yes. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.